social media. Everyone will be sending each other text messages. Yes, God's going to work it out for you. Yes, God is going to do this. And yes, God is going to do that. And everyone is happy. Yes, he's going to do it for me. I'm so excited. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. God will do for those who believe and trust and surrender to him. That's where the promise comes from. And I, I, I do see it so often. It's very easy to send that encouraging messages. But we have to search ourselves. Like David said, search me knowing and see if you find any inability in it. I remember speaking this, speaking this the same way I'm speaking today. It's almost like rewinding the clock in a church that I was um, a member of at the time. And I was speaking it. And you could see maybe 75% was receiving and there was maybe 5% that was quite comfortable. And that's, that's, I, 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 that's the best way It's not about getting the hallelujahs and the amens. It's about delivering the message that God gave me to deliver. When God gives a message, when God gives you an instruction, you have to follow it through to the team. You know, the days of old when he would send someone to go and, and, and destroy the land and destroy the people of that land, you couldn't afford to leave not even one alive. Nothing. Everything had to be destroyed. Whatever God says, you have to meticulously do it and do it thoroughly. And it's the same thing with the message. The message may not be a message that brings popularity. Somebody may get the message and find it is <laughs> too much, and they go. But better to tell the person the true message and please the master. The master. Best to send someone the true message and they receive the message and are set free. <laughs> because we can we can send a message, share a message, and say it's from God about prosperity and about their husband or wife that's coming and that the, the harvest is arriving for them. We don't know what each individual does. Um, set the captives free especially in these times especially in these times where there's been too much lukewarm service to God he deserves more because he's so merciful because he causes the sun to shine on the just and the unjust because the wheat and the tears must grow together when God comes to pluck up the wheat, he needs to see who is who. There should be no confusion who serves God. No one needs to tell anybody, I serve God. The way you conduct yourself, your character, how you're living, should mirror God's, God's will for his people. We are, when we come and surrender to him, we are his representatives here on earth. And right now there is so much madness going on in the world so much evidence of what we read about in revelation that these are end times and people are saying things like, oh no the lord's going to come back and it's all going to be made right we were to go back to our old lives again and i would say that's delusion we know that in the days of, of sodom and gomorrah the request was made please see if i can find 10 people or were 10 just 10 and it wasn't possible. In, in this day, I would say many of us, we say, yes, Lord, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian. We, we give ourselves a title. The title shouldn't have to be given because the way we live our lives should mirror who we represent. If you work for McDonald's, everyone knows you work for McDonald's because you're wearing a uniform. If you work for a certain corporation, they expect you to represent them whilst you're working in there and put your nine to five job you're meant to represent that, that organization that you work from no one should have a question who you work for, and their expectations are high so why would we believe that representing god is less there is nothing higher than representing god so in every area of our lives we have to be doing right if we're sons we have to be doing right by our parents mother father if it's brother do right by brother and sister friend Wives, exactly the same. God is watching every single thing that we are doing. Everything. Everything. He's listening to the words that we speak. The Bible says, let the words from my mouth and the meditation from my heart be acceptable in your sight. When we are doing these things correctly, and I'm not saying we have to be perfect because only he's perfect, but God will judge the hearts of his people. And if our big
biggest and greatest desire is to please God, then it is well. If we're putting God first at all times, it is well. It is well. Putting God first in everything that we do is well. It is well. I'm going to read um, 2 Timothy chapter 4. I'm going to read the scripture because it represents what we feel a lot now. But there's all these encouraging words and the harvest is here. And, no, and I, I appreciate them when I receive them. But there's always an if. There has to be an if attachment. Everybody wants to hear the good news story that the harvest is around the corner. Nobody wants to carry the cross. And we have to pick up that cross. We have to carry that cross. It can't be smooth sailing. God will test every single one of us. Every single one. We'll go through some trials. We'll go through some testing times. And how we come out of it is dependent upon the level and the strength of our faith. The Bible says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And when you've endured and you've prayed and believed and you've not given God a timetable, you know the amount of people I speak to and they say, oh, I prayed over the weekend. It didn't work out. And I'm thinking, wow, the weekend? You prayed over the weekend? You're putting God, the Almighty, on a timer. When the Bible distinctly says, the race is not for the swift. That's what Paul said. The race is not for the swift, but for those that endure. If we truly believe in him, we won't put God on a time. We'll immerse ourselves in him, believing and trusting and saying, I know that you'll come through. When we surrender to when you surrender to someone, you're 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 you're, you're, you're trusting that person that if you're on top of a mountain and you're falling, that they're gonna catch you. The Bible even mentions this. These angels will take take and camp over around you. This will that should put against the stone. And until you continue to stay in the fight, that good fight of faith that Paul speaks about, we'll never see that. For those of us that have been through the trial and have come out the other end. That's why our testimonies are so important. When we say, you know what, I've been through the fire and the furnace, and God was there. If I told you what I went through, you would be surprised. But one thing I held on to was my faith. And these are the scriptures that kept me going. So my brother, my sister, you can do it. I want to greet Brother Binti. I know that he lost his brother. Brother Binti, I've been praying for you. I'm sure all of us on here send our condolences no that's okay that's fine Amen. but even, even in death even in death binti the, the death is a thing that wakes us up yeah and it should wake us up to remind us Amen. how fragile this gift of life is yeah no no time there is no time there's no time for us to get this situation wrong we can't do that I mean, oh. can't to be to be giving God lip service and saying all these things, and then in private, it's a different life. No, the Bible says that these people they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far. Oh. God has got so much to offer, and I'm, and I'm seriously, I'm speaking the way I'm speaking, not because I'm performing. This is what I feel in my heart. And I'm so glad that my brother Peter's on here because he's known me for a long time. He knows me working in the proof system with these children that were so unruly the violence from these children is is to behold and he he can tell you that in that environment you know i, I had to stand firm on my beliefs i wasn't ashamed to say i believe in christ and believe you me it was that christ that gave me peace with these children the way they would calm down and in my presence was amazing and it was that so we can't be playing out here it's a serious business and I'm seeing too much nicey nicey messages being to and fro. This is not the time for that. This is the time for, God is allowing this COVID-19 to happen because the world was living in extreme sin, wickedness, immorality was going through the roof. How could we not see that? Oh, 
Card number 2019 said, how long, is that? So how long do people that didn't carry on with this madness? How long do they think that God's going to sleep and watch this happen? The God just decides to be silent for a little while. You cannot say you believe in him and see these signs and not recognize it. Christ said, he was Christ to himself, that my sheep know their master's voice. And he warned us, pre-warned us of these days. How can we be confused? Oh, I'm going to pray that the Lord's going to make everything well again. Why should he make it well? For what reason? Is there enough people out there believing in him, truly believing in him? Is there enough people who are willing to be persecuted for his namesake? Is there not a lot of lukewarm that we see? We have to open our eyes. We have to open our eyes. And this platform is, is, is not for anyone to feel that they have to speak or say anything. This platform is for us to all learn from each other. If God gives you utterance, the Holy Spirit gives you utterance to say something, then the platform is yours. But this belongs to God. But I'm just simply being obedient to his, to his instruction. That's it. Nothing more. But we just, just to remind ourselves that the promises of God are real. They are 100% real. The most painful thing for us is when, specifically when we lose loved ones, the hope is that they found Christ before they leave this planet. We hope that they have found Christ before they leave here. And yes, weeping will endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning when we remember that they have gone to be with the Father. Death is here for that purpose. COVID-19, God is staying silent to it at the moment for that reason. He's watching all of us. And when the wheat and the tears have to be separated, there should be no confusion then. Christ says, I will say, I know you not. But Father, Father, I, I... Doesn't matter what you did. A man can take a, take a demon out of an individual in front of the masses, but because his heart wasn't with God, Jesus says, I know you not. The scripture says, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far. We can think of Pharisees, we can think of false prophets. Anyone who claims to represent him, but they're more concerned with how many people are sitting in the, in the seats in the church, how many people that they have attention from, than whether they're feeding someone, whether they're sowing seed on good ground. We should be willing to have a thousand people in a room and only have five left or a hundred left if we're lucky because we're preaching and sharing the true message of God undiluted. It's not about numbers. It's not about how large. It's about good ground, good seed, and a seed that has the potential to bear fruit. That's what he's asking for. Jesus said, if a branch on me is not fruitful, it's of no use, but to be thrown into the fire. We have to walk by faith and not by sight, but we must also fear him. Because the, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. Without fear, we are undisciplined people. We know how we were living in the world before we came to God. All of us, reckless. Reckless. So we come to God, we experience his love and his mercy, but we fear losing that very thing. We don't want God to turn away from us. We heard they would say, don't turn your face away from me, Lord. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me, Lord. And nothing more beautiful than the Holy Spirit that guards you, directs you, gives you up, tells you when and when not to speak, tells you what to speak. What a blessing it is. The Holy Spirit is a blessing to God's people. As long as we listen for that still, small voice. Nothing better. But the day is not a bad news. It's, it's not a bad news day. It's a good news day. The word of God is always good news. For those mm. that really want, want to know mm. the Lord, for those that really want to serve Him in spirit and in truth, mm. it's only ever good news. There is no bad news. No, never bad news. I'm going to read um, 2 Timothy chapter 4. And it says here, I charge you therefore, 
before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine according to their own desires because they have itching ears they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables but you be watchful in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist fulfill your ministry and then Paul goes on to say, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally, here is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me. On that day, not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearance. Amen. Amen. You hear, you hear Paul talking about, speaking to Timothy, talking about all the things that I've just mentioned. People wanting to hear what they want to hear, the good news story. They don't want to hear that about long suffering. They don't understand that sometimes we as believers have to go through things for God to show up and for the naysayers and the unbelievers to see us stand firmly on the word of God and to see God bring us through because we're here to glorify his name. Not just to worship him, but to be a, a, a sacrifice for him at times. Just as he did for Job, my faithful servant Job, we have to be willing to go through. And if God chooses us, look at it as an honor that he saw something in you that he would let you go through some kind of tribulation and take you out. Because this world is not your home. If you believe in him, it's a temporary time. This body is not yours forever. It's a vessel. It doesn't represent who you are. That's why we fast. We fast to have dominion over this indisciplined physical body that we have. We see the young people going crazy. Why do they go crazy? Behaving in certain ways because it's all about their body when they're young. Mine was no different. But when we come to him, we surrender. We die to the flesh. We forget this body. We have discipline. Discipline. You have to have discipline to see all that God has for you. And he will reward you. It won't even be a long way. You just, really, just ex exempt that discipline. Put him first. Put him first. Always, every day, every morning that he wakes you, give thanks and praise that he's given you life. You are awake, alive. That means he has a purpose for your day again. And tomorrow's never going to be promised. So always focus on the day that you are in. And whatever he puts before you, someone phones you because you're a believer and they need your time, you have to give your time. Don't wait for a tap on the back. Don't, there's no tap on the back required. Now that we've come to God, we understand how grateful we need to be. We understand how blessed we are to have him. That he would even consider us. That they would say, what is man that you'd even consider him? We have to be mindful of these things. It is so important. I've been fasting for three weeks, and I'm telling you, I feel fired up. I feel red up. I feel ready. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be silent now. To God be the glory. The floor is open. To whoever wants to speak, you can speak. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Blessings, blessings, um, that and um, greetings, everyone. Greetings, greetings my brother. Um, my my message today was gonna be about um waiting waiting on God and waiting for what God has to offer for us. Um I think I think especially during this time of lockdown as well, um we you need to be patient. You know, we need to be patient. You can't good things don't don't come through rushing. They come through waiting. It comes through being patient. So and nothing, nothing that lasts long ever comes quick. 
But what you wait for can last very long. And as we know of God, if you wait on God, what he will bring to you will last um, forever. Amen. When you die, you will, you will go to a place where you will, where you will, where you will never die again. Um, this time on the world is also uh, it's temporary. Eventually, this time will end. But as we know, later we'll go into another life where that time will never end. So what we do here um, is very precious. And that is a, a mean that um, because, we, because we have a precious amount of time that we rush that time either. No, there's always time to be patient. There's always time to be humble with what you're doing in your life. And um, I wanted to read Psalms 98. Sing to the Lord the new song, for he has done marvellous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation, his righteousness. He has revealed in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his, his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout out joyfully to the Lord, all the earth, and break forth in song. Rejoice and sing in praises. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of a song, with trumpets and the sound of a horn. Shout joyfully before the Lord the King. Let the sea roar and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord. For he is coming to judge the earth with righteousness. He shall judge the world and the peoples of equity. Amen. So again, you see that um, through us waiting on, on God, we will then be able to see all he has to offer for us, all the great and amazing things he has um, in title for so that's how I wanted to. Um, Thank you, Mark. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God bless God. you, my brethren. God bless you. And uh, Brother Marcus, Brother Marcus, and Brother Albert, and our Brother Peter is with us. God bless you. Um, we thank God that we are able to assemble again together. Um, I'm sorry to say that I won't be with you for more than for an, up until 8 o'clock because I've got another Zoom um, I have to attend to uh, no my, my dear bishop um, who died. His church is having a Zoom and I promised to join them because funnily enough you can't, he's a very good friend of mine and um, I can't go, can't go to the house um, they did ask me to do the video for them for the funeral, so I'll be able to attend the funeral. But they're a very nice man, and so I have to try and join them at eight o'clock. But God bless you, my brother David, brother Binti, and um, brother, brother Marcus, and also brother Peter. That's what I can call my brother Peter. Brother Peter, God bless you. Thank you. God bless you too. Thank you. Uh, okay. Good. Nice to have you. Um, nice yeah. to, you know. So I thank God for your introduction, Brother David, as you mentioned about, you know. Um, uh, it's a very good scripture. You read 2 Timothy 2. Um, Paul writing to his, um, Timothy's son in the gospel. And, um, you know, preach the gospel, he says. Preach the gospel. And that's what God call us to do and um, you, you know we have to know what our calling is all about but also we can't preach the gospel unless we are saved you know we have to be saved because God can't use us unless we really reach, reach the condition that you know to, to, to use us you know, people can't just go and preach the gospel if they're not saved. They have to be repent, they have to baptize in Jesus' name, and they have to receive the Spirit of God before they can preach. So not everybody can preach the gospel, but we know we fulfill that criteria. Uh, um, by the way, before I go any further, brother, brother Albert, my deepest condolence to you, um, to That's the right. last of your brother. Um, I've been praying it for you. Well. I've been praying it's for well. you, my brother. I've been praying for you. And, um, I know, I know. We're, yes, living, yes, in, yes. we're living in some troubled times, but, you know, we just have to be strong. 
And regardless of what is happening around us, let us continue to lean upon Jesus and trust in him. And may, yes. God, may God be your strength, my brother. May God be your strength. Yes. Um, it's yes. not easy. It's not easy. But amen. But we'll continue to pray for you, my brother. Come and we pray that God will give you yes. strength. Yeah, so preaching the gospel is so important and it's, it's our ministry. And you see, the thing is that we have to realize that time is short. Time is very, very short. We don't have a lot of time left, believe it or not. Jesus says, I must do the work of him that sent me because the night cometh when no man work. So we, we can't take it easy. It's not time for us to relax and take it easy. We must be on our Father's business. Once we are called and we are saved, we must, anything you find in your hand to do, do it for the Lord. Because it's only what we do for God or what you do for Jesus is going gonna, is gonna to pay. Nothing we do, it doesn't matter how intelligent, how we study and whatever we achieve, we achieve academically or whatever wealth we gather, our fame we gather, means nothing. What means something is what we pass a word of encouragement or we pray for someone or, you know, we uplift someone some way spiritually. That, that's, that's what counts. Nothing else counts. And so, he said, the Paul says, preach the gospel. And um, preach the gospel, be instant, in season, out of season. Um, uh, I think it's um, first, Second Timothy, um, Second Timothy four. I think it was you read. Yeah, chapter um, four, yeah, chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four, yeah. So I charge you, therefore, before um, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at His appearing. Hallelujah. I charge you. It's a charge. It means that it's something you have to do above all things. A priority. Preach the word. The word. So when we have the word, we can't keep it to ourselves. We have to find some way of passing the word on to someone. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with long suffering and doctrine. So you see, brethren, we have to realize we, as the children of God, the people of God, God, the ones that God has called, we have a doctrine. We have a doctrine. Our doctrine is based on the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our gospel is repentance and baptism and, and the gift of the Holy Spirit to every believer. That is our doctrine. That is where our doctrine is around. Anything out of that is not of God. And everything, that is how we have to preach the gospel. We have to tell people, you need to repent. You need to put on the name of Jesus because you need to receive the Spirit of God. Because the Bible, and I'm glad for your inspiration, David, um, Brother David, because your fasting is paying off. Yeah, you're, you're very, God is using you know, wonderful way you're inspired because you can tell that by, by these words that you are you know bringing for us uh, the Amen. word of inspiration you know so the lord is dealing with you and i'm yeah. thank god for these words it's very important so the time will come it says the well when they will not endure sound doctrine now sound doctrine not everyone can in, in, endure sound doctrine Sound doctrine is just what I'm saying. What we preach about the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and what his commission that he gave to his apostles who became his disciples, who became apostles, who preached in this gospel because Paul was an apostle. He was not a disciple, but he was an apostle. And he was this gospel he preached is the gospel we have to preach that men must be saved. By repentance, you know, and that is, you know, it's it's not something that's very nice when you tell a person they have to repent because you're saying to them, you know, they they are a sinner. But 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 that's just the truth. Unless they have repented, they are a sinner, and they, they without repentance, you know, there's there's no hope. A hope is based on repentance, trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
so yeah um repentance and, and um because it says the time will come they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lust they will heap unto themselves teachers having itching ears it's not easy i'm telling you when we can endure sound doctrine it is it is a gift from god not everyone can sound endure sound doctrine people would sometimes tell them the truth of what jesus says and they find ways around it but we have to stay as you say earlier brother david we have to stay in the word of god that all that matters we have to stay in the word of god we cannot go out of the word of god the the bible says in revelation any man who take anything out of this word that is written in this book their name shall be taken out of the lamb's book of life and any man that add anything to this word that is in this book the bible the the plagues the plagues that is the plagues shall be added to them so so is it so for my brethren it's so important that we stay in the word of god and that we abs absorb the word of god and that the spirit of god open our understanding that we go even more and uh, um, more deeper into the wisdom and knowledge of god it is awesome it is wonderful it is it is a blessing and um yes brother marcus i'm glad to see you going so much in grace and I, I i pray to god that you continue to grow in grace i believe in my heart that the seed that is sown in you was sown on good ground i believe it was sown on good ground once it is sown on good ground you, it is well you just continue to grow and the lord yes, will keep you and bless you and strengthen you and in inspire you now this psalm you read is a wonderful psalm it's one of my favorite psalm i love this psalm psalm 98 they have some psalms that i love and this is one of my favorite psalms sing unto the lord a new song sometimes i, I you know brethren when we when we have the spirit of god there has to be a song bubbling in your heart you know, I, I don't know, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm there and I, I just hear the song I want to sing. And I, I just, I may, I may be in a chord, I can't sing it, I sing it, I hum it. But we, the Lord shall, should put a new song, a song in our hearts to, to glorify Him. When, we, when, we, when, we, when we're in God, it's like we're in love. We, it's like, you know, brethren, you know, we are, we're all men here. And we all know, I mean, except for Mark, Mark is a young man, he don't know about love. <laughs> I don't think he's that really rich in it. But you know how, when you meet uh, your, maybe your, your wife in, in first, and how that love, how that love was strong, how, how you just, you, your mind and your, your heart was just set on that person, because there was love. And so, brethren, when it comes to God, we have to adapt that love for Him. And when we adapt that love for Him, His Spirit moves in us. And we in, He inspires us. You know, sometimes I'm just there and I'm, I'm just inspired. And the Word of God just come to me sometimes. I mean, yeah. So this song, this song Marcus, sing unto the Lord a new song. Because He has done marvelous things. You know, he has done ma and if we think about it, you know, God is good. And this this psalm this psalm has had a vision. This psalm has had a wonderful vision that we should sing unto the Lord a new song. It doesn't have to be a brand new song, but sing a song unto the Lord joyfully. Because the Bible says we must sing with psalms and spiritual songs that we should make a, a joy. It says the psalm the, the writer says we must make joy in our hearts to the Lord. So once we're serving God, we must have that joy because the spirit is, is a spirit of joy. And so we should have a joyful spirit. Sing unto the Lord a new song. He has done marvelous things right hand, and his holy arm, his holy arm has gotten him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation, his righteousness has he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. When we think about our God, brethren, we, we serve a mighty God, we serve a powerful God, we serve a holy God. And um, 
and when we know this God we serve. You know, it is just awesome to think about us as, you know, David, the psalmist says, when I think about the, the moon and the stars and the, all that you have created, what is man? So when we think about that, brethren, when we think about the word of the psalmist, so what is man? We say to ourselves, what am I? Who am I that God has looked down upon me and touched me and put his spirit in me and inspire me? We, we think about that. It's awesome. It's awesome. And we should have that joy. We should be making melodies in our hearts. It says, make a joyful no noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. So now we find that the devil is fighting against the church. Because we can't. We, we can't sing as we used to. You see how things have changed though. You see how things have changed. There was a time when, you know, I go to church and we sing and we shout and we, and, and it was awesome. Sometimes you feel the Spirit of God come in the house of the Lord and you see anointing of God upon the Spirit of the saints of God. And sometimes you feel the presence of God and the joy of the unity. That's why David said, how good, the psalmist said, how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together and in unity but now you've seen how it's changed because even though I still go to church I, I, I can't we can't sing anymore the days was there where we could sing as loud as we can so you see how the, the, the tide has changed brethren you see how the tides has changed the tide has changed so you know what we can do now for the Lord do it because the time will come as, as, as Timothy says, when they will not endure hard, a sound doctrine, but they will heap up to themselves teachers with itching ears. Itching oh, okay. ears. Nothing they're not. Here now. This what is mean? what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying so we can see. Mm -hmm. Teachers having itching ears. They can't, they, they're hearing, but they don't understand. It's like it's not, oh. it's not connecting. But I'll tell you something, brethren. All I can say is that we are blessed and we should give glory to God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I think I will leave it there. But God I, bless you, Baba Day. God bless you, my Amen. brothers. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Brother you can close us, my friends. What do you have anything you want to say to us? Share with us. Yes, yeah. uh, what's about that brother? He's not saying anything. Yes, it's going to be good to hear yeah, from no, the brother. It's, 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 it's as well. When anyone comes on here, they want to speak. They, I want everyone to feel comfortable. Okay. So he's speaking us. It's as well. Yeah, no, I could, I could um, say something. All right. Come so in. We have to finish at 8 as well, you know. We have to finish at 8. So I'll go a little bit over the yeah. time because we've got somebody else. But we're meant to be finishing at 8. Go on then, Peter. Speak. God bless you. Yeah, no, no. I think, I think something just came to me, and I think it was a spam. Um, that 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 came to me when you were talking about deception and yeah. it's um it's everyone lies to their neighbor they flatter with their lips but mm -hmm. harm deception in their hearts and i think and that's uh, psalms 12 too i think the point is is that we're living we're living in a society at the moment where that just that's just the norm mm -hmm. That is just the norm, and people are just living by a deception and a lie, and yeah. including myself. Like I've lived that life too. You know what I'm saying? I'm not perfect, yes. but I think what it comes down to is that we, as Christians, are fighting something that is that is huge, and I think mm -hmm. we need Jesus more than we've ever needed Jesus before, yeah. and we're losing people to this lie, to this lie, yeah, to this, this system. And I think that when it when it comes down to the devil, the devil has about 10 different heads that is integrated into every part of society that's life. right and that's right it's about acknowledging that and understanding that yeah and we're at a, we're at a precipice we're at a point in time now where i think it's more important to spread the word of jesus and not even just do that but live live in jesus's way that's right and, that's right and i think and i think i think it's just important especially with young kids at the moment young kids um and there's the, the devil just has so many different claws that are just in in them. That's right. Music, that's right. That's through right. Through technology, yeah. through social media. That's and, right. And, and this is the problem. It's 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 like all. It's almost like the devil has just advanced. 
2.0. Yeah. And we just have to be ready. Yeah. And now we're just living at a time where where time time it is coming to an end. And I really do feel that. And I think we just need to be prepared more than ever. Yeah. We need to put our affairs aside. We need to put our differences aside. And we need to sort out our affairs in the house of so God. That's it's right. important to do that. Um, and, and that's how I'm feeling at the moment in terms of just who when I'm speaking to people and 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 just the the, the, the fear that they've got not even just fear but that negativity yeah and, yeah man it's just it's just a crazy world but we just have to have faith and I'm and I'm so glad that we've got this group yeah um, yeah thank you thanks so much for this group it means Amen. a lot bless you're you welcome my brother bless you Peter Amen yeah no worries but Albert Oh, oh, you see this? Yeah. Okay, all right. All right, so, um, just a scripture of, um, in um, March to 10. Um, and, um, uh, March to 4, but the whole issue which I hear. I will always, um, not always, but I'm, I'm believe strong all the time from years, because if Jesus is the final say, everything is safe, his word. But I believe the situation, even what that brother just said about a uh, Christian, how we got twisted with the devil, yeah, and what we don't have said. And I believe this is a, the message that believers be lack to preach. And I'll, I'll go quickly on that message of Jesus said, uh, Matthew 4, verse 17. It's a repeat. From then on, Jesus began, repent of your sins. Mm -hmm. Turn away from God. That's right. Turn away to God. Turn away to God. Yeah. For the kingdom of heaven is near. Yeah, that's right. Okay? That's... I will say before I got saved, well, I'm well over 30 years. So uh, I, I heard that be in the beginning for a few years, and then I don't hear. So that message doesn't preach. But if Jesus preach that message, for me, like you said, you said it well. Uh, 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 people cannot go and preach if you don't baptize no. in the Spirit. You no. don't baptize in water. No. Well, so before you do that, you have to repent. That's right. If you can go to work, if you can go to work your boss, you let you say sorry, sir. Sorry, I was later on. Excuse me, or or anything. You write a letter, your doctor. So so why Jesus? You can't you can't repent. Yeah. How can you how can you be accepted in the kingdom of how can you be saved when you don't repent? That's right. This is a big problem. Yes. And they don't. And also, you know, when when you're gonna say to someone that you have to repent, especially if they leave God and they come back, and they come back, they struggle, the devil always struggled them, they said, you are attacking them, or you're judging them. Yeah. Repent. Yeah. The repent have to say. Yes. Before Jesus, his cousin, John the Baptist, said the same thing. Yeah. That's his message. Actually, John the Baptist, he, he never married, never had wife, never had children. Every day, every day, repent, repent, yes. repent, yes. repent. Yes. repent. No, no, why? Why? Did you, actually, John the Baptist never got commitment like Moses, disobey God, or David, or some sort. He never done that. He early said, repent, repent, repent. But look what Jesus told his disciple when Jesus prepared them. is in Matthew 10. He said, verse, verse 5, verse 5, he said, Jesus sent out is 12 apostle mm -hmm. with instruction do not go to the gentiles this, this, this is again this is this is this is don't go to the gentiles yeah or the simultaneous so so but only to the people of israel yeah God lost ship. Yeah? Go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. Yes. You see? And then he listen. For me, 
I don't understand in my whole life. It is because probably I sit down the platform for a, a, a massive, largest congregation. And, 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 and because I, 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 I am always now make me go back. Why? All this time I sit down, that message doesn't preach. But why is it there? Why Jesus say? And Jesus keep on saying, stay, repent in the kingdom. And now he said, go and go and preach to the Lordship. Why? Why Jesus didn't say go to the Gentiles then? We are Gentiles. Yeah. Why did he say go to Israel? The Lordship. What was the purpose, the reason? Jesus tell them, send his disciples, he tell them go to the lost sheep Israel. Why? Why Jesus tell them not to go to the Gentiles, go to Israel, but we are Gentiles. And Paul come and preach to us. And that's why Paul and Peter have an a, a, a issue. Peter, so now, why? Because the Israel, as the Pharisees and Sadducees, and this is where we travel. And that brother, what he just said, Peter, preach about Jesus Christ. And, and, and the, those, those, those Pharisees, Sadducees, where they were preaching doctrine, false doctrine, religion, religious. And there's a big difference between religious and religion. And I, 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 I tell you from, um, Last week, Thursday, I was told, I was asked to pray, to stand for behalf of my country. I just got a call for someone I know is a born again. Cause she's a born again, called me, tell me to stand. She's got group all over, uh, different people, international. But then I have to apologize with you, brother uh, Donald, because last time, not last week, week before last, you asked me to come and read. But I couldn't, I couldn't do it because I'm involved with a group of people as well they, they, that's they, right. most, of them, most, most of them catholic that's right yeah but me as i was asked i just like you just said you said the right thing now whatever god asks you you and david you have to do it yeah and i just flow and now is i have to deal with this group of people because they're not born again and, I, and, and, and to me, what I what my message to them is, is, is about start here, repent. Even they say, they, 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 you see, I don't go by Christian. Because Christian, there's a big confusion. Mm. We don't want to face it, there's a big confusion. But to me, why Jesus said to his disciples, don't go, don't go to talk to the Gentiles, go to Israel. Why? The Sematarian. Why? Be because, because, these people, they were not preaching the word. They have their own doctrine, those Pharisees and Sadducees, what they were saying, what they were preaching. That's why Jesus had to correct them. If you if you notice, is Jesus always sit down. His friend was sinners, always with sinners. But these Pharisees, Jesus always bombard them yeah. because they have the long doctrine. And I want the line to our time now, we must face it. A lot of people will trap by false doctrine. As David mentioned before, false doctrine. Mm -hmm. And tickle people ears. <laughs> yeah. And this is, if we deny that, it's happened. Tickle people ears. They will come a message, prosperity, everybody will bless, everybody will be rich. <laughs> I, I, I never said Jesus said, God, of course, God, God is supply. The Bible said, God, God will supply all our need according to his riches. So in other words, God will never let you starve. God will never let you beg. But you got to have a trust in God. You have to obey God. You have to obey God. But for me, even that, that is the biggest problem. Disobedience. Why we are in that situation of, of the what the brothers said, the virus? Because we disobey him. I mean, David was saying that. We disobey. And then he allowed this thing happen to make you look. And then you turn, you turn to me, or you, you you end up in the same situation. So for me, the the, 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 the the whole nation, I would say the whole nation from the top, I don't care if you're president, prime minister, mm. you have to repent. You have to repent. And that message has to be preached. If we don't preach that message, we as well will have responsibility with God. Because a 
person like Donald say you cannot say you will preach. You know, baptize. Yeah. You have to be baptized, yeah. baptized water. You have to baptize the Holy Spirit. And if that is not trouble, anyway, because of time, I stop here. Yes. Amen, my this is my brother. Amen. We have to we have to speak. We have to speak um, well, when you're ready, definitely we need to speak on the phone. Well, I want to um, obviously pray with you and pray for you and so on. Yeah. So I'm going to use this opportunity to close us in prayer and just to say, Heavenly Father, Lord, I give you thanks, praise, and honor. Thank you for everyone that came today for this fellowship meeting, Lord. It's a platform that you created. And it is all about you, Lord God. God. Whoever comes on here, Lord God, we want them to to, to 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 learn about, to learn from each other. We all, all learn from each other. Amen. And Lord, Holy Spirit, Lord God, God, to conduct every fellowship session that we do, Lord, for you to be in total control, for all of us to be in one accord. When you teach, Lord, you said, wherever two or three are gathered together, you are in the midst. We have to be in agreement. Amen. So repentance is the key. Christ is the answer. He's the truth, the light, and the way. And the only way to salvation is through him. I want to pray also, Lord, that God, for my brother, Albert, Lord. I yes. know what it's like to lose a loved one. I know how, how painful that can be. But like I said earlier, on, he's a man of God. Yes. Yes. He understands that this thing Amen. called life, it's a gift. It's a gift. Tomorrow is not promised for any one of us. You know, we could be, we could be um, giving our condolences to someone and the next time it's us. We don't even know. You never know. You know. Death can come at any time. That's and right. That's why we have to focus on God. We cannot say tomorrow, 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 because tomorrow never comes. All we have is today. And when we live like this, Lord, when we're reminded that death can come at any time, then we'll be more disciplined in our that's world. Right. When we're reminded about death, we're reminded how precious the gift of life is. The reason why we're living in this time, 2020 and 2021, with this COVID-19, you are staying silent to let us be reminded that life is precious. How often do we speak to people about coming to the Lord? Yeah, you know, yeah, not ready yet, I'm not ready yet. But believe you me, I've been hearing from so many people who I knew in my past who are now calling now, calling now, because they know who I, who I believe in. They want to make inquiry, you know, this life, this God business. They want to know now because they see death. They see their loved ones. They see people in life. This is what God wants. Those that are turning 